Hey guys. This will be a quick live. Um, I'm not going to be on here for long. I'm a little tired. Just got off work, got out of the shower. Uh, as I got into the shower after work, um, the Lord started speaking to me almost immediately. And he was talking to me about um, going and telling his people something. And I said, what, what do you want me to tell them, Lord? And he said, tell my people about my love. I was like, okay. Uh, I know I know about your love. I know love isn't just 1 Corinthians 13. There's there's a lot more to it that's really unpacks his love and a lot of aspects of his love and his nature. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is long suffering. Love is also discipline. Love is not uh, twisted. The way the world views love is not God's love. God's love is the agape kind of love, which is uh, unconditional and unselfish and not self-seeking whatsoever. Um, he also, uh, scripture got dropped into my spirit, and that was uh, 1 Peter 4, 9. Or, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 4, 8. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins and when the Lord dropped that in my spirit uh, he said what is what does that mean uh, <laughs> and uh, I some usually the, the wisest answer is the humble answer I have no idea but I started just kind of thinking about it um, and uh, I was like, I was like, God, I know, uh, you don't cover things up, and that verse could easily be misconstrued and taken out of context. But it's not the Lord's not saying the, that in this this scripture that love covers things up. That's not love covering a multitude of sins does not mean that. He and then he gave me this revelation. First off, he is love. But what did Jesus do to remediate the sin problem? He, he shed his blood. And it's this verse could be read. Jesus' blood covers over a multitude of sins. And it, I thought that was pretty awesome when he gave me that. His, so it's a religious spirit covers things up to still look at that that didn't happen and it becomes hypocritical behavior uh, I see it all the time even within the confines of the church the church walls is it's almost like this this verse gets taken out of out of context that love covers a multitude of sins it doesn't necessarily overlook certain things. There are times when it sort of can, but that thing that you could take that and run with it. But it's love. Jesus' blood is, is the atonement for our sins. There's nothing that we have to do. But at the same time, we have to, the light exposes darkness. And sometimes that, that, that truth that's brought about brings offense and not that we're in, as as people of God we're not intending to offend we don't get like our jollies out of it well, but what we do is we still have to be the light bearers we, we don't cover the light we don't cover the calling we don't cover the light we don't cover Jesus in us because that's the Holy Spirit is Jesus in us He's the one that empowers us to walk the walk of faith. Without him, we can't do it. And he also doesn't just empower us and give us his character. He, he tells us to abide. That if whoever abides in him, he will abide in us. And we will bear fruit. But we will also... That, that fruit isn't just the Galatians fruit. Uh, love, joy, peace, happiness. It is that. But it's also the fruit of ministry. It's, it's the fruit of repentance. Because when we 
mess up when we don't 100% look like Jesus. We have to admit when we're wrong. And it's not just saying sorry. Repentance is much more. It's much deeper than just saying, oh, I'm sorry. It's not flippant. Repentance is, I messed up. I have to alter my my mind, the way I'm the way I view things, and align it with the way God views things. So, uh, a lot of times, the best wisdom and counsel you can give people is a simple, "What would Jesus do in this situation?" And if the answer is, "I don't know," well, you have to know Jesus to be a Christian. So, I would advise you get in the Word to get to know him be in prayer to get to know him and he transforms us daily as we seek him his in his face and his glory his countenance then the, there's then that transform transformative power hits uh, it's when we see him we are made like him and we won't see him in all of the fullness of his glory until we get we get to heaven, but that doesn't that that should not be the church's excuse to not seek His face, to seek because because as we seek Him, the the sanctification unto glorification that process is is happening. It's a process of maturity. So I'm going to release a full teaching on this. Um, not this Sunday we have a guest speaker, but the following Sunday, uh, the Lord really put it on my heart that the the church. The, and I, uh, again, not to offend. This is just what the Lord has shown me, uh, and it's and it's a biblical concept too. I can back it up with with scripture. Uh, the mainstream church has become a bottle fed nursery. Uh, it's, it has. Uh, the Apostle Paul even uh, rebukes churches that are like that. Uh, you know, you should you're on milk still. You should be on meat. Most people think that means oh, I should be feeding myself, and, and somewhat, yeah, but it's much more than just reading your Bible, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's being like Jesus on the earth, and there's those that'll, that'll crucify you just for saying, for trying to talk like that, like, you can't be like Jesus, like, um, that's what Christian means. Like, I, I mean, what what is, <laughs> we've watered down what the word Christian means. And we say everything else, we say believer and everything else. But followers of the way means we're following Jesus who is the way. And we are becoming like him all the more every day. And if we're not, we're not doing Christianity. We're not. We're not following Jesus. If we're not becoming like him, we're not we're not Christian. Uh, and signs and wonders and evidences shall follow those that believe. Praise the Lord. Alright, that was it. God bless.